Blizzard's latest bit of classic WoW content, the Season of Discovery, has now been out for a solid week. And what a week it has been for the game. Players uncovering new runes in real time, realms which are so full as a two-digit number of layers to try and fit everyone in, class balancing happening in rapid order, and so much more. I have to say it's been a pretty amazing start to the season. But now having seen a ton of the content available myself, I've decided to take a step back and consider a few things which would have been good to know about pre-launch. I mean, it's not as if the game had a PTR or anything, so nobody would have had a chance to know about these things. But if you're starting off more recently, haven't had as much time to progress your character, or you just want some useful tips, I may be able to help out there. Of course, and I kind of hope it goes without saying, but I'm going to be talking about how things will work in the season, so spoilers ahead. If you are after a pristine, fresh experience as much as possible, the internet is going to be a pretty risky place to be. So with all that said, let's make a start. First up is considering the new reputation that's been added into the game. It's called the Azeroth Commerce Authority for the Alliance and the Juratar Supplier Logistics for the Horde. At level 6 or above, you'll occasionally receive a waylaid shipment from mobs in the open world or from chests. There are actually two tiers of supplies you can get as well, and there isn't a clear distinction between the two on the tooltip, but you can assume what they are based upon what level the mob was that dropped it, as well as what is required to fill it. For example, a low-level waylaid supply might need Peace Bloom to fill, whereas a higher one might need Bruiseweed. Also, when you get to Friendly or above, you're going to need the Tier 2 waylaid supplies to progress further. You can hand these waylaid supplies in at any of the new NPCs outside of the auction house in your faction capitals. If you just hand them in as they are, you'll get some reputation and silver, but if you fill them with whatever item they're asking for, you'll get a much greater reward. The kicker here is that the waylaid supplies are unique. So you get one, you have to go all the way back to your nearest auction house, fill a box if you can, hand it in, get your rep, and then go back to questing. And yes, you should try to fill the box as much as you possibly can. Don't go spending all your gold on it, of course. I mean, if you have gold, but one of your class runes will be locked behind earning honored with this reputation. So this grind is something that everyone will want to do. In a recent update, Blizzard made the filled boxes non-unique, but there's about 40-something variations of the waylaid supplies that can drop, and I'm going to assume you aren't carrying around six pairs of brown linen pants at any given moment, so chances are you're still going to have to go back to the auction house to fill them. Oh, and do watch out if you have an add-on that auto-turns in quests. If you accidentally talk to the NPC before filling the box with the item, it's just going to hand it in, speaking from experience there. So all in all, when you get a waylaid supply, as a drop, first of all aim to hand it in as soon as possible, and B make sure you're filling the box with whatever item it needs sooner rather than later. Next thing I want to talk about are realms, because in Season of Discovery Blizzard are taking an entirely new approach and are really putting their foot down when it comes to trying to balance factions. I want to bring this up so you understand how things look and that in some cases for Season of Discovery you won't always be able to pick whichever faction or realm you want. Certain realms, basically the PvP ones, are for the most part currently locked for new character creation. There are just so many players on these realms that the servers cannot support more players. On top of that, all PvP realms, including RP PvP, are subject to faction-based restrictions. If one faction begins to outnumber the other, character creation for that faction will be temporarily disabled. We don't know exactly what percentage Blizzard are aiming for on either side here, but this restriction has already come into play on a ton of servers. For the most part on the Alliance side from what I've seen, because as per usual with Vanilla, it's perhaps the one version of WoW ever where Alliance is the more popular faction. Furthermore, the old Vanilla design choice of not being able to have characters of both factions on the same pvp realm has also made a return for season of discovery plenty of the larger realms begin to queue towards peak times as well oh and when they eventually do raise the level cap to 40 it's going to be like a fresh launch all over again with tons of people coming back so all these things i've talked about on realms aren't just relevant now they will be in the future too. Or you can play on a PvE server and not have to deal with any of these really. At the end of the day, it's up to you where you decide to roll, but keep in mind it may be a bit more restrictive than what you are used to. Next, we have professions. So in Season of Discovery, the profession meta has been shaken up quite a bit. 
and there really isn't a wrong answer as to which profession you should take as they all serve good purposes. The first thing you should know is that we can only train two journeymen in any profession at the moment, that's the tier that caps out at 150. The level needed to advance to expert has been moved to 26, so that is beyond our reach. This includes the book to increase first aid, which just isn't in the game. I went and checked that one. There are a few racials that increase profession skill though, such as gnomes getting 15 extra engineering, Toran getting 15 herbalism, and so on. I don't know if this has any impact at 25. I haven't been able to find anything yet, but maybe there is something we need to discover still. Of course, it is super fast to go from 1 to 150 in any profession. Gathering takes longer because you have to go about in the world, but crafting takes no time at all. Because of this, I would definitely suggest going to gathering professions on your first character up to level 25 with an emphasis on taking skinning plus either mining or herbalism i think i would go with mining because bronze bars are pretty good at endgame now taking two gathering professions on your first character isn't a huge breakthrough or anything people have been doing this on vanilla forever for season of discovery though the extra gold income is quite nice pre-level 25 it'll get you your standard quality of life things such as health parts the odd green upgrade maybe but more importantly it will allow you to buy items to fill those reputation boxes and start working towards that goal a bit faster. Aside from this, every profession has new stuff. Enchanters have new weapon oils, alchemists can make a new potion needed for a quest line, and each of tailoring, leatherworking, and blacksmithing have a way to upgrade a certain item to an epic version. My initial thoughts is that you do want to be a crafting profession that fits your class best at 25. Do note, however, the best crafted item for your main specialization may not always come from the profession which makes the most sense for your class. As for your second profession, I think this one is pretty flexible. I've taken engineering myself so far. We all know how good engineering is in vanilla. It's usually a safe pick, but if you're something else, I think that's okay as well. Now, you may be asking at this point, if you're taking tailoring and engineering, what about making gold? That still does matter in the game, and you're not going to be able to buy all these items without farming gold, right? Well, actually, gold is not a problem at all, and that brings me on to my next point because at level cap, the bonus gold modifier is kicking in. What this means is when you cannot gain any more experience, experience that you would have been granted from quests is converted into gold. Here's an example. So culling the threat is a level 25 non-elite quest. Usually it would reward me with 18 silver and 2000 experience. However, on Season of Discovery, I am level capped at 25. So that 2k XP is converted to copper, at a rate of 1 XP to 0.06 copper, meaning the value of the quest reward goes up by 1,200 copper. Or in other words, what used to be an 18 silver reward is now 1 gold 38 silver. And some of these raid quests or elite dungeon quests give over 2 gold by themselves. So yeah, gold at 25 really ain't a problem. I did end up doing a fair bit of dungeon grinding whilst leveling too, and I just so happened to have the Red Ridge Mountains area untouched when I hit level cap. I did a full clear of that zone and made somewhere around 15 to 18 gold from quest rewards alone. I guess the concern with this is one day they are going to raise the level cap beyond 25, and you could have cleared every single quest on the map, but going back to dungeon grinding is still a pretty good alternative. Yes, it's not the most exciting thing in the game to do, and I certainly wouldn't want to do it on every character, but that day when they eventually raise the level cap is going to be so hype. It's going to be like a fresh server release all over again. And do you want to be crowding around every single mob in Hillsbrad or Duskwood? Or do you want to go and play dungeons for a few hours and get to level 27, 28, 29, and then head on to new questing areas? Oh, and our characters are going to be so powerful by the time the level cap has been raised, we will be able to clear through dungeons in record times. All in all, don't worry about gold too much. You get plenty at 25, and when you're leveling, if you can save some quests and do a bit of extra dungeon grinding, that will help. When they raise the level cap, I think going back to dungeon grinding will be a solid choice over quests that you've already done for gold too. However, speaking of dungeons, let's talk a bit more about them. Because whilst we're used to the concept of a level cap and that's currently set to 25, the actual end game of Season of Discovery starts before level 25. 
pretty much every piece of dungeon content around level 20 or so drop tons of items that will last you for a very long time. In many cases, you won't see an upgrade till you're getting into the Black Fathom's Deep Raid. The big three dungeons we're farming for both factions are Wailing Caverns and Dead Mines at around levels 18 to 20, and then at or towards level 25, Shadowfang Keep. As we've already talked about, doing a few extra dungeons will let you stock upon quests to complete a level cap for bonus gold. And if you land yourself a rare item such as Smite's Mighty Hammer, Cruel Barb, Venom Strike, leggings of the fang all of those good things they're gonna last you well into raiding content imagine you're getting your prebis from level 20 something dungeons because that seems very vanilla like to me and at this point in time there will be constantly groups forming to farm gear and level up in dungeons so definitely make the most of it next i've got a few items which should you get you should absolutely be holding on to and selling for what they are worth as a general rule of thumb whenever we have a fresh server if it's a common or above quality item just send it over to your bank alt. Mailing's cheap and you can sort it out later. But with the changes made in Season of Discovery, some items have gained a much higher value than they typically have. I could probably do a whole video on exactly which items and why, but I just want to keep it pretty short today. Each of these items I'm going to list are either used in endgame level crafting for powerful gear, or a part of a grind that everyone will have to do for a rune. So you want to make sure you're hanging on to fish oil, iridescent pearls, spider silk, Lesser Moonstone, Mossagate, and Materials for Bronze Bar, so Tin Ore and Copper Ore and their respective bars. All of these are worth more than usual, ranging from a little bit to a lot more. Prices will of course differ from server to server, but don't let these items go for cheap, and certainly do not vendor them. Finally is something I've been thinking about this season. Where should you put your hearthstone? Of course when you're leveling it really depends where you are in the world, but at level cap being close to Kalimdor for the raid is pretty useful. Worth a mention for alliance players, there is a new quest available in Oberdeen, which will have you defeat the first boss of the BFD raid. After you do that you'll get an item which you can turn back in at the quest giver, and he will then open a portal from Oberdeen directly to BFD. So you want to make sure that when you're doing your first raid, you have this quest picked up. I believe the first boss also drops a quest for the Horde, but you just hand it in outside BFD and you don't have a portal because the Horde were smart enough to have more than one flight point in a zone as big as Ashenvale, unlike the Alliance who are apparently allergic to decent travel routes in this game. I've liked having my hearth set to Menethor Harbour recently on the Alliance. It's close to the boat to get you over to Oberdeen and then you can portal down to the raid. It's quite central on Eastern Kingdoms, close to Ironforge if you need a capital city, and you can always take the tram or the further flight point down to Stormwind if needs be. You can also get a boat to Theramore from the docks too and go up to Ratchet. You might die once or twice if you go north through the zone, but you are going to need the flight point in Ratchet if you're Alliance. There is a rune rather nearby there, that's all I'll say. For Horde, Orgrimmar seems pretty well situated for everything you might need. It's pretty close to the raid, it's a capital city so you can do trading. There are Zeppelins if you need to go somewhere further away. I mean, you'd have thought the Alliance who have been on Eastern Kingdoms and Kalimdor for however long would have had better travel routes than green space invaders, but hey, there you go. But that's all I have for you today, just 7 tips which I hope you find useful on your Season of Discovery journey. I've been having an amazing time so far myself in the season, and I'm looking to roll an alt pretty soon in fact. I'm so glad the level cap's only 25 at the moment because I kind of want to play everything, and grinding to that level really isn't too bad. Anyways, let me know what you thought about the video and how you're finding Season of Discovery yourself down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching and listening in, and I'll see you on the next one very soon.